Hello guys. Um, today I am going to make a video on how you can configure what we call transparent point-to-point -point, uh, configuration on MicroTik. Okay, we want to have a point-to-point -point link that will serve as a bridge, transparent point-to-point. -point. So the first uh, uh, um, radio, which is represented by this beautiful uh, uh, symbol here, is going to be named Radio A. And it's going to have the IP address 192.168.1.1. .1. And it's going to be on subnet uh, slash 24. And then the second one is going to be Radio B. And it's going to be giving the IP address 192.168.1.2. With a subnet mass of slash 24. And when you look down here, you will see the configurations that we need to perform to make this link work as we want to. The reason why you want to set up a transparent point to point link is if you want to link two branches or you want to link a branch of an office to the headquarters or you have uh, a shopping mall and then you have a warehouse and you want to link them together because you want them to be on the same network. So you need to configure a point to point uh, bridge or a transparent point to point pipe between the two locations. So on Radio A, we are going to configure, uh, we're going to set up a bridge, and then we'll assign ports to the bridge, and then we'll assign an IP address to one of the ports, preferably to ETA1, okay? And then we are going to enable WDS mode and configure the wireless interface as bridge, okay? Now on the, on, on the other one, which is a Radio B, we are going to create a bridge, assign an IP address to one of the ports as we did in A, and then enable WDS mode, and then configure the wireless interface as station bridge. Without wasting more time, let's jump in. Okay, so uh, you have your windows open, we scan, and then because we have uh, one of the uh, uh, radios already plugged to our system, and you have it here, so I'm just going to log in using MAC address because my system has not been configured to this network, okay? So I will click on this uh, MAC address, and then the default login is admin, password is empty by default, so we are just going to log in. So now we are here in this beautiful environment, MicroTik Router OS. Okay, so the default configuration is here and it's asking us if we want to remove it or um, we just want to keep it. Okay, I don't want to remove it because if I remove it, I'll just have to log in again. I, I, I don't want to do that, so let me just keep it. Okay, but if you don't know what you're doing, it is good you remove it. It doesn't cost you anything, it's just the stress it to take you to log back in. So I'm going to say okay. The first thing I want to do is to give this uh, radio a name, a router, as you may call it. I'll give it a name so that it will be possible for me to know where I am. As you can see here, it's just being represented by the MAC address. I don't want that. It's difficult for me to know. So I'll come to system and I'll go to identity, system identity, and I'll call it radio A. Okay? That's all I need to do here. Radio A, so I'll apply and I'll OK it, and you can see here that it has changed to Radio A. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create a bridge. So I'll come to this place, and then under this bridge setting, I'll click on the, the plus sign. I can just give it any name I want, a name that represents what I want. I can call it WDS Bridge, but I don't just want to waste my time typing, so I'll leave it at Bridge 1, and I will say apply and OK. So I come to port here and assign ports to the bridge I have created. If a one has been selected by default, so and then this is the only bridge I have here. If I have more than one bridge here, I should be able to see them, but I have only one bridge which I created earlier. So I'll select it and I'll apply and say OK. The next is to add the second interface, which is the wireless LAN 1 interface. I'll add it here to this same bridge one and I'll apply and OK. Having done that, I'm just going to go and assign IP address now. So I'll click on IP, come to address, and this is what I have here by default, but this is not what I have in my network diagram. In my network diagram, I have 192.168.1.2 slash 24. So I'm going to remove this one and I'll add. 192.168.1.1 slash 24 and of course I'm going to leave it to be at uh, ETA1. It can work 
the area of the interface is if I leave it at wireless, it will work. If I leave it at bridge, it will work. Okay, but I just want to be in control of what happens, so it is best I leave it at uh, if I want. So apply and okay. Now that I have done this, the next thing on my agenda, let's check. You see, okay, we have created the bridge assign port, we have assigned IP address, so we need to enable the WDS mode and configure the wireless interface as bridge. Okay, so we we'll go back here. And from here, we can go to the wireless interface. And as you can see, by default, it is turned off. Okay, so we double click on it. We come to WDS and then click on the, uh, the arrow sign there and say dynamic. And then here, we are going to set it to be at a bridge one, which is the bridge we created earlier. That's the WDS default bridge we're using now. So, having done that, uh, we come back here on wireless, go to the wireless tab. This one, because it's the AP, okay, between the two radio, this is serving as the AP, so we are going to set it to bridge. We'll leave the band to 5 gigahertz. The channel width is going to be at 20 megahertz, okay? And here, the frequency here is the default frequency. If you don't know what you're doing, don't change the frequency. But I suppose as a wireless engineer, you should know the frequencies that are allowed in your city. Okay, don't go use frequencies that are not allowed. So I'm going to leave this one at 5180. Most of the time, it is not the best practice to leave it there. So you look for a frequency that is allowed, that is free, that is not highly populated with less noise, okay, and choose it. So the SSID here, I'm going to put our SSID, which is timigate.com. Always visit this website, okay. So I'm going to come to um, um, here at the wireless protocol. I'll leave it at unspecified. And at uh, this uh, security profile, we did not create any security profile for this uh, lab. So I'm going to leave it the way it is now. Okay. And having done this, uh, I think this is pretty much all I need for now. So I'm going to click on apply and I'll say okay. And then the next thing is that I have to enable this interface that is disabled by default. So I'll just click on uh, enable. That will have it running. Okay. So now, as I have done that, I need to go to the second uh, router, the second radio, which we call radio B, and have it set up for this uh, 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 link. Okay. So I will go back to my Windows and I will scan. And I should be able to find it here. So this is the second way that I'm going to log in using the MAC address. So having logged in, we still repeat everything we've done here. I don't want to remove it because I don't want to have to log back again. So I'll click on OK. Now I'll go to the bridge. Uh, but preferably, let me just give it a name first. So I'll come to uh, settings, system, sorry. Go to system and I'll go to identity. Here I'm going to call it radio B. <laughs> Let's start with the radio B, okay? So I'll apply and I'll say okay. And then I'm going to come to here and I will create a bridge. Just leave it at bridge one. And I will come to port, assign port. Okay, this is ETA one and it's going to be associated with the bridge one we just created now. So we add another port, which is a wireless now one. Wireless level, I'm sorry, it's going to be on this page. So, go to wireless level, still on bridge one. I will apply and OK it. And the next thing is to give an IP. So, we go to IP address, remove this one, we don't need that one. Put the one we need, 192.168.1.2 slash 24. Leave it to be associated with Ethernet. Remember, I said it could work for Ethernet wireless LAN or the bridge one interface it will work for any of those so having done that we go to the wireless okay, double click on it come to WDS here and then uh, put it at dynamic and then set this one to be associated with bridge one apply and ok it you can double click again and go to wireless here you set this one to station bridge okay 
leave the band at 5 gigahertz, which is the same thing as A. If you change the band here, they will not be able to co communicate. Leave the channel width at 20, which is the same thing for A. Frequency here, this is a station. We don't have to treat any frequency or change any frequency here. It's going to associate itself with the frequency of the one that is broadcasted. SSID, we are going to leave it here. Okay, it will pick up the SSID from the AP, which is the one we configured earlier. Here, the frequency scan list is set to default. Yes, we are going to leave this at default because the frequency we are broadcasting in is part of the default frequencies allowed in my country. If I have changed it to frequencies out of the default frequency range, I will have to specify that frequency here. Assuming I am broadcasting with a frequency from the list of super channel frequencies, then I have to list it here. Okay? The wireless protocol, I'm going to leave it at any for now. And then security profile, because we didn't set any security profile on the AP, I'm going to leave this one at default. So both of them will be at default so that they can communicate. Okay? So that's pretty much all I need to do here to get this going. So I'll apply and I'll OK it. Okay, the next I need to enable this interface. So I'll just click on this enable side. So it is up now. So I'll double click on it. What I need to do now is to scan, see if I can find that. And very good. You can see here that we have it. Okay, we have timigate.com here. So you click on it and then we'll connect. Click on connect. Okay. I will apply and OK it. And once you see this sign here, you know that the link is connected. The link has been established. You go to registration, you should be able to see it. Okay? You see we have a very good signal here. And we are connected at 25 slash 27. Every other thing that needs to be done to make this link very perfect will have to be, uh, you know, things like us playing with the frequency, trying to change the frequency and the wireless protocol. I can do a bandwidth test of this link now to know what we are pulling. Remember, we can still do some fine tuning to make the link very, very effective. The essence of the lab is to establish a link and prove that you have connectivity. So we go to tools, go to bandwidth test, and here we put the IP address of the other uh, radio. 168.1.1 and then of course we are doing a TCP connection and here we put the login name we didn't put any password so we are going to just leave the password at blank the other radio has no password it's just the default admin login so we click on start okay so this is for receive that's the download so once we do that we should see it start coming up here you can see that it is pushing okay I can see that the total average is about 18 meg, and this is doing about 20, coming down to 21. Remember, we can make this better by choosing a good frequency as well as changing the uh, 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 wireless protocol. For now, the wireless protocol is set to any. I can change it to uh, NV2. As a matter of fact, let's do it, and we will see that this should bump up more than this uh, 22. Okay. So let's let's try and connect to the remote radio here. Um, the remote radio is at uh, is this one. So we're just going to try and connect using the mark address. So we are here at the remote radio. Let's change the wireless protocol. Let's change it. You can see from here the wireless protocol is specifically saying unspecified. Let's put it to NV2. Okay, apply and okay. We're gonna lose that connection for a moment. So we're gonna lose the connection, sorry, for a moment. So we'll be back here. Okay, this is the video B. Remember we first changed it at video A. If I done that at video B, we would have lost connectivity totally. You have to go to video B and manually connect to it later on. So here we just have to come back here and change this one. You see this is at L. So let's specifically say NV2. Okay, since A is already running MV2, we are putting B on MV2 now, MV2 rather. So now that we have them connected, the connectivity is back here, you can see from here. So let's do the bandwidth test again and see. Remember we had a, a 21 here, you can see the total average was 20. So let's start again and see what will happen now. Okay, speaking up, 7, 13, 19, 25. Are you seeing 26? You're seeing 27. Now you're seeing that we are able to bump up, okay, from 21 
to uh, something like 27. Okay, 